We are on the verge of a technological revolution. Smart cities, self-driving cars, deep learning, cloud robotics, autonomous warehouses and mining. The future belongs to autonomous systems. We don't know what this will look like yet, just that the research has to happen right now. This is why some of Sweden's largest universities are collaborating with industry in a venture called WASP, Wallenberg Autonomous Systems and Software Program. So it's all about intelligent machines that support and help humans to solve very, very difficult problems. At KTH, the Royal Institute of Technology, Bo Wahlberg is leading one portion of the program with a focus on vehicles. Can you show me bilan now? Here at KTH, there is a laboratory where the scientists can audition their calculations. This is a smart mobility lab where we try out our algorithms so we can tune and test our algorithms here before doing it in real traffic. This revolves around developing technologies in computer programming, algorithms, for autonomous systems to be used in cars, buses, and trucks. <laughs> the whole idea is to try them in a very controlled and safe environment, but it's the same algorithms that we then move out to the real traffic situation. But this is not just about autopilot. It is an entire smart system. The biggest progress has been made in confined environments such as mines. Here they already are test driving trucks that successfully drive down kilometer long mining tunnels with precision accuracy. And there are tests underway for private vehicles as well. But before we'll see driverless cars out in everyday traffic, there are several problems that must be solved. Carl Eric Orsan at Lund University is working on one of them. The cars will be using mobile internet and will be making many of their decisions in external data centers, what we call the cloud. But today's cloud technology is too slow. A delay of maybe one or two seconds is not a big deal for a human user, but if we have a machine user, then that is too long. Then we need to get down on turnaround times maybe in order of some tens of milliseconds. Carl Eric and his team have to make the system work faster. The solution? Small localized data centers known as edge centers. A traffic crossing like this with a lots of cars and pedestrians and bikes is a good example of how an edge data center could be used in the future. With an edge data center and synchronization between the autonomous cars, we can have situations where we maybe don't need the traffic lights. Instead, the edge data center computations decides the allowable speed and the turning rates of the vehicles. So at this intersection, immediate calculations must be performed close by, at the edge center. While other larger calculations can be performed farther away at the traditional data center. Carl Eric's team now has to get the system in milliseconds to decide which calculations to perform where. And it all starts here, with a whiteboard trying to develop a mathematical model of how things ideally should be controlled. So it works better than anything else. Just now it's the best that we have so far. Listen. From there, they move on to the computer, programming a simulation. After it seems to be working properly, they move on to the lab. The next step is to set up a demonstration, one can call it, in our robot lab, where we have industrial robots, mobile robots, flying uh, drones and so on. And to set up a system where we can execute part of the computations involved. Vi kör den helt autonomt. 
och gör en spiralliknande rörelse. Here at the robot lab we also find other autonomous robots. This little guy is a part of Kalle Orström's research. Ja, fin det. Vad bra att den funkar nu. He is interested in how a computer sees. My research is all about the art of going from pixels to meaning. So it's the kind of algorithms that you need to write to infer 3D structure from images or recognize what's in an image. To recognize and then understand what it is seeing is important if a robot is going to be self-controlling and make smart choices. This is not easy, and a lot of scientists have tried and failed. So one of the ways of testing these recognition is to do challenges where we try to recognize a thousand different categories, and these were tested on a million images. And the best results uh, a couple of years ago uh, using the old traditional technique where you had handcrafted features and then machine learning, the best results had something about 20-25% errors. And this is not good enough. So humans, human performance is about 5% errors. And then a couple of years ago, new techniques called deep learning were tried. Deep learning mimics how nerve cells function in the human brain. It makes many small, simple calculations that analyze only a small part of the picture. The results are then sent on to the next algorithm, and this is repeated in many layers. It could eventually involve millions of calculations. Then they show the computer a thousand pictures of cats, for example. It then can self-calibrate values in the algorithms until the accuracy is maximized. And in this way, the computer learns to recognize a cat. Then the scientists do the same with a dog, a house, a car, and so on. Currently, when we test the best systems on, on this task of recognizing a thousand categories on roughly a million images, the best systems achieve an error rate of about 3%, uh, and that's better than the human performance. This research isn't only important for vehicles, it can also be very useful in healthcare, for example. Here, Kali works with his graduate student Ida Arvidsson, developing a model for algorithms that will recognize a cancerous tumor. We also use vision to understand location, where we are. This is something a computer can do as well. Scientists experimented by taking many pictures of the cathedral in Lund to try to create a 3D model. So by taking many images and finding these interest points in the images and then matching them, we can finally make a 3D reconstruction of all those interest points and thereby by the buildings. So we're trying to devise algorithms that can calculate the 3D shape of the cathedral and also calculate the camera positions. And these form a map so that for future images we can calculate exactly how we are positioned relative to the map. And that gives us a localization ability. This type of positioning can often work better than the GPS technology that we use today. In a city, GPS satellites are often obstructed by tall buildings and can't work indoors either, for example with robots in a warehouse. Now in the lab, Kalle wants to merge the two systems and create really intelligent robots. So one of the most more exciting things here is that we want to try out our algorithms on mobile robots, autonomous robots moving about. And we want them both to build a 3D model of their environment, but also to recognize what the different parts in that model, what they really are, like a window or an opening or a door. To spread their growing knowledge of autonomous systems, Kalle Orström, Carl Eric Orsen, and Bo Wahlberg have doctoral students connected with WASP's graduate school. Building this kind of smart systems and intelligent machines is very difficult. 
So, so the objective is, of course, to educate these uh, researchers and engineers for the future. Vi borde ha någon form av antenn. Tror du de här är något till sånt, eller? Ja, det skulle det kanske kunna vara. Så <coughs> någon differentiell GPS. Uh, One of Bo Wahlberg's doctoral students is Linnea Persson. Så här kommer den. Linnea's project is to get an aircraft to land on a moving vehicle. Uh, so what we can see here is the UAV, the unmanned aerial vehicle, approaching the car. Uh, the goal here is to land the UAV on top of the car. Both the airplane and the car are supposed to be completely autonomously controlled. Accomplish this, she needs to create a very advanced algorithm. This time, the landing went well. Mm -hmm. To linear constraints by using... All of the students at the graduate school meet regularly, both to learn and to share knowledge. So we get to meet people from other universities and from industry, and from this you get an exchange of ideas. Instead of solving the problem via... So this is like RRT methods? Yeah. Okay. And you get to learn about what they're doing, so you get a much broader view of the entire field. Autonomous systems are going to fundamentally change our society and revolutionize industry. The form it will take, we don't know yet, but the possibilities are enormous. And much of the frontier research is coming from Swedish universities. This is where the new, young researchers are studying, those who will be forming our future smart society. I think that autonomous systems is a growing field and it's going to get more and more important, and that's why I want to work with it in the future.